Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today is an exciting day. I'm coming to you with another new release. This is the Glowforge Aura. Now this is a craft laser and it's being released today for you to purchase. This video is sponsored by Glowforge. However, all projects and opinions are my own. Now this laser cuts hundreds of materials up to a quarter inch thick. So there's no way I can cover everything in one video. So stay tuned for future videos on my YouTube channel. Today we're going to unbox the laser, set it up, and take a look at some of the things it can do, as well as get an overview of the laser itself. So if you're thinking about purchasing this, this is the video you want to watch. So let's check out what's in the box of the Glowforge Aura. I love that right on the box there's a code that you can scan to get a start guide. Also, as soon as I open the box, there's a sticker right on the top with a website address, and you go to that website to actually set the Glowforge up. That website will walk you through everything you need to know about setting up your machine. For now, I'm just gonna start getting this out of the box so I can show you what this machine does. When you unbox, note that some of the things will be inside of the machine. What you get is the machine itself, and connected to that is going to be the laser itself, and it is gonna be in some packaging material. So you're gonna to wanna to slide that out, and it is just a magnet attachment inside of the machine. There will be some other packaging material inside here and you want to remove all of that. We'll get a power cord. This is for ventilation and we're going to discuss ventilation and safety in a minute. Then you do get a sheet of plywood. Now this is a proof grade material and we are going to talk about those and that is a great starting point so that's what we're going to be cutting in this video. And then there is a tray as well. So these two pieces were packaged together underneath the laser itself. So be sure to unbox everything that's in the package before you get started. Next, you'll want to install the tray. So you can gently just push on this head and push it all the way back to the back of the machine. And I just pushed on these rods here. Then we're going to add the tray. So the tray has some cutouts here and those go to the sides. So we're just going to drop this in and there is an area on the inside of the machine where the tray rests and those cutouts go on both sides. Now the tray is installed. On both sides you'll see a small door. This is what is referenced as the pass-through tray. So this is what allows you to do larger materials because they can pass through this area and under your laser. This is on both sides and you just flip it down or flip it up when not in use. Remember that safety always comes first. So this is the laser and while it cuts you might even see a small flame. However, when you're cutting, if you don't do it correctly, you don't use the right materials, you could have a fire inside of the machine. So I would keep a fire extinguisher on hand and be sure to, we talked about proof grade materials from Glowforge, those are laser compatible. If you put other materials in your machine that are not from Glowforge, be sure that they're laser compatible so that you stay safe with your machine. You might also want to review all the other safety instructions. They're there as you go through that setup page on the website. Be sure to read through all of those and make sure you're following them. Now we need to ventilate this machine first before we do anything else. Ventilation is very important. Never operate a laser without ventilation. So I'm going to show you what comes with the machine and then I'm going to show you an optional accessory that you can purchase if you don't want to ventilate out a window. So first let's take a look at ventilating out of a window. On the back of the machine, you will see where the machine ventilates. The tube that comes with the Glowforge, you can attach to this back. It is a tight fit, just work it around and push it onto here. Then you would you take the other end and ventilate it out a window. And you would ventilate this anytime it's in use. If you don't have a window or don't like that idea, there is an air filter you can purchase. Let's take a look at how that works. The air filter itself is the size of like a small trash can. Now this is an optional accessory and it is an additional cost. Very easy to assemble. You basically remove the packaging. Inside you'll find dual HEPA grade and activated carbon gas filters for that maximum air purification that you're looking for. It is a separate power source, however. So I did have to add a power cord to this you will notice a button on the front of your air filter and you might see it lit up at different times. So this air filter actually pairs with your Glowforge via Bluetooth so that it only turns on when you're cutting. 
And we will cut something here in a little while and I'll let you listen to this. But you may see this light flash as it hooks up to the Bluetooth on your Glowforge. The air filter inside this is good for about a 100 hours of printing and then you will need to change the filter itself. And then all I did was the other end of that hose, instead of venting it out a window, I just added it to the top of this air filter. Now, it is basically the same as adding it to the back of your Glowforge machine. You just push it onto the top of the air filter itself. So with the Glowforge personal filter, you can create in any room that you choose and you don't have to be close to a window, which is what I like about it. It does trap over 99.9% .9 of particles. So you can feel confident that it's doing an amazing job of protecting your home and your family while you create with your Glowforge Aura. And now this is ready to go. This is what I will be using to ventilate my Glowforge. So for the rest of this video, as I'm cutting things, this will be in the background running as my filtration source. Now, to plug up the Glowforge itself, so I have the filter plugged up, and now I'm going to insert the power cord into the back of the Glowforge. And now I'm ready to complete my setup and actually plug in the machine. The setup was extremely easy to follow. So just follow the directions on the website and basically your Glowforge will make a temporary internet connection. You connect to it, then you connect to your Wi-Fi, and now this is just like a printer. So I can basically print to it from my computer or other device. So I did wanna say that there are environmental conditions that you need to operate your Glowforge at. So first of all, you want it 60 to 75 degrees in your space and you don't want it under any high humidity conditions. So if you opt to vent this to, through an outside window, then be sure to remove the vent when you're not operating it and be sure to keep an eye on that temperature and humidity, especially during extreme weather seasons. To turn your Glowforge on, you will just plug it up and unplug it to turn it off. Now, if it's at rest for about 30 minutes, it will kind of go into a sleep mode. So you could technically leave it plugged up all the time totally depends on the way you want to operate it. If it's in that rest mode and you want to wake it up, you either lift the lid or there's a button that we're going to press to print and you would press that to wake it up. So now to make something, we are going to need some type of material. So let's discuss materials a little bit before we make our first cut and take a look at that. I mentioned proof grade materials a little bit and let's talk about those. So proof grade are the materials directly from Glowforge. First benefit is that it has this code on it that your Glowforge Aura will read and it will tell the machine exactly what settings to cut this with. Now these are tested rigorously by Glowforge so you know that you're going to get the best cuts possible. And then I also like that at the bottom it tells you that they're for the Glowforge Aura so you don't get the wrong size material. The other benefit of proof grade materials is that they already have the masking on them. The masking helps to control the marks that a laser can create when it's cutting. So you do wanna add a masking to most materials and projects that you use. Now there are some engraving projects that you might not wanna add masking to, but as a general rule, you'll want masking on the front and even the back of your material. The masking that comes on the Glowforge material is designed to work with this machine. We will talk about other materials. You can use other brands of materials. We'll talk about in a second what you need to look for when you use those materials, but I did want you to understand some of the benefits of the proof grade materials. And I do think these are perfect for beginners. So if this is your first laser, you're just starting out, proof grade is a great way to get started and then you can move into other materials. So let's talk about some of the proof grade materials I have here. So first of all, I have a variety of plywood. So these first couple are walnut plywood, and then you have a light bass plywood. So it even comes in like different finishes. Here's a light cherry plywood and a light maple plywood. Now you can also get hardwoods, and this is a couple of examples of that. This is walnut hardwood and basswood hardwood. Then veneers, so this is a maple veneer as well as a walnut veneer. So if you're looking for a veneer product, they make those as well, and a cherry veneer. Then there is leather. So this is a leather product, and these only have masking on the front. Then next is acrylics. So in the Glowforge Aura, you cannot cut clear acrylic currently. So you do need a, an acrylic that is a color. So I have a few different colors here. There's a teal, an orange, 
and the label indicates the color because you can't see through the masking in this case. And then there's a green, there's several different colors. And um, so just pick the one that works best for your project. There's a purple and a black. Then iron-on, yes. So Glowforge is releasing their own iron-on product that works with a laser cutter. So we are going to talk a little bit about why this iron-on is the one you wanna use. And you don't just wanna use any iron-on in your Glowforge. So let's talk about that. Okay, so the Glowforge iron-on comes in a wide variety of colors. You use it similar to other iron-on products. Now I'm not gonna make an iron-on project in this video in particular, but I will be testing this in a future video, so stay tuned on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. So when you're picking something like iron-on, or if you wanted to use a different wood in your Glowforge, you would wanna make sure that it is laser compatible. It needs to be compatible with a diode laser. Few different reasons. One being you might not get the results that you want. The second reason is probably the most important, and it's that some materials can damage and ruin your machine. And that is the last thing you want to do. So always pick materials that say laser ready, laser compatible, something to that effect. Now, of course, if you pick the proof grade materials, they are laser ready, they are laser compatible, and then of course they contain that code, and I did wanna show you really quickly what scans that code. So there is a camera in the center of the lid of your Glowforge, and that's what is going to show you where the project is on your material, as well as read that QR code. So if you're not using proof grade materials, you're gonna have some trial and error most likely. So there are some common presets. There is tons of community on the Glowforge website where you can see what other people have tested and what other people have used. But what I wanna caution you on is that the settings for the Glowforge Aura are going to be different than the other Glowforge machines. So if you have another Glowforge machine and you got the Aura, you may have to adjust your settings for this machine. If you have the Aura, it's your first laser, and you're looking at a forum and people say that they used this setting and it worked perfectly, you might have to adjust it to work in an Aura if they used it on one of the other Glowforge machines. So that's kind of scary, right? Like what, what materials should you avoid? Let's talk about that first. So the materials you need to avoid using in your Glowforge. So we already talked about clear acrylic. Currently, we'll not cut it. You wanna stay away from leather or faux leather that contains chromium, so be sure it doesn't include chromium if you're gonna use it in your laser. Then there are those materials you never want to cut, so we're gonna talk about those. Here's a brief list. Carbon-based materials, PTFE or Teflon-based materials, PVC-based materials, and that's what most probably like vinyl type products are going to be made out of, so be careful there. PVB-based materials and beryllium oxide. So those are your top five, like avoid at all costs. Some of those can be toxic and others can damage your machine. So now let's talk about what you can cut in your Glowforge Aura. We're gonna cut some of those materials in this video, but I definitely can't cut all of them today. Stay tuned here, because I'll be doing future projects. So what can you cut in the Glowforge Aura? You can cut iron on, as long as it says it's laser safe. You can cut like a peel and stick type product, sticker type product. Again, as long as it says it's laser safe. Remember, a lot of those are PVC based. You can cut leather. Again, you wanna make sure it doesn't have chromium, so make sure it says it's laser ready or laser safe. You can cut acrylic. Now it needs to be less than three millimeters. And remember, it can't be clear or translucent. You can also engrave it. You can cut wood, like light plywood. Again, less than or equal to three millimeters thick. And yes, you can engrave wood. Then you can also cut things like cardstock paper, fabric. With those last materials, you may have some trial and error to get the settings right. And you do always, always, no matter what you're cutting, you want to stay with your Glowforge while it's cutting and keep that fire extinguisher handy. Make sure that there's not a fire that starts within your machine. And then to those materials, if you're not using the proof grade materials that already have the masking on them, you might have to add a masking. Now you wanna make sure that your masking says it's for lasers, that it's not PVC based. And then on some like engraving projects, you might not wanna have the masking on at all, so you might need to remove it. And Gorilla Tape is a great option for removing that masking on materials that might already have it on there, including those proof grade materials I just showed you. So let's talk material sizes. 12 inch wide is the maximum size. Quarter inch thick is going to be with the crumb tray, which would be something that you would be cutting. 
You can remove the crumb tray and go up to three quarters of an inch thick for things like engraving. And then as far as length of your material, remember I showed you those pass-through drawers on both sides. So you could put like a 20 inch piece of material in here, it would hang out the drawers on the sides. You just wanna make sure that everything stays flat. So flat materials only. And that includes when your piece is hanging out the side of this, you might have to support it a little bit to make it completely flat if you're using the pass-through feature. So now I think we're ready to cut. So let's head to the computer and take a look at the interface and how you get your designs. A few different ways to get those. Yes, and you can upload your own designs. So we'll go ahead and get a design and we're going to go ahead and print something on the Glowforge Aura. The website you wanna to head to is app.glowforge.com. And this is after you set your machine up. So be sure to go to the setup website first, set your machine up, probably forward you to this website. Go ahead and bookmark this website. This is the one you will use to print to your Glowforge every single time. When you open it up, you will see a few starter designs. And some of these are free, so you can see this one is free. And a lot of these you will see something that says free with premium. So the Glowforge software itself is free. So Glowforge print is absolutely 100% free. You can pay per design, or you can opt into Glowforge premium. It's an optional upgrade, monthly fee, and it offers a range of benefits. It does provide robust creative tools in something called Magic Canvas that allows you to design from scratch. You get a very wide catalog of free designs, like thousands of free designs in the Glowforge catalog. And we're gonna go through some of those and those are the ones I'm going to cut. And then with Glowforge Premium, you also get early access to any new features. And you can actually share some of the benefits of your premium account with up to two other people in your household. So that's nice as well. So let's first look as if I'm going to do something out of the Glowforge catalog. So I just want to design. I don't want to make something. I don't want to upload something. I just want a ready-made design that I know is going to cut. That's where we're going to search for designs. You can click any of these folders over here to the left, or you can search for anything. So I'm going to search for rainbow. Then I can just see all the rainbow designs that come up, and I can pick my favorites. So let's say that I liked this one. I could click more info. I can see more info about that design. This is showing up free for me because I do have a premium account. But if you did not, you could choose just to print it once or you could choose unlimited prints and you could purchase just the single design if you would like. It tells you the assembly time, the assembly skill, the assembled size, and the suggested materials. You also get a commercial license with these, which is nice if you're selling things you make with your Glowforge. I do feel like these are very user-friendly and perfect for beginners. So this is a great place to start with Glowforge creation. So we're gonna go ahead and click the Glowforge button at the top to head back to that homepage. When I pick a design and I pick add to my dashboard, it actually comes up here. So here are some recent designs and some of these we're going to cut. This is actually a design that says new design here that I made when I first got my Glowforge just to do like a simple cut because I just wanted to test things out, make sure it was working. So I just went to create a new design. And when you do that, you'll see a few different options. You can create a blank design, which is what we're gonna do in just a second. You could upload a file. So you can upload SVG, JPEG, PNG, or DXF files. And you can also trace a design. So if you wanted to put something into your Glowforge and trace that design with your Glowforge camera, you can do that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do create a blank design. And if you go to this button that says import artwork, I can click that and there's already a bunch of things already uploaded. And one of those says perfect for coasters down here. So I just went to that and I found a design that I liked for coasters. Now these are engraving designs and I thought this would be a great way to sort of test my Glowforge. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna add the art to my design. So you can see my art here and this is a live view of the inside of my Glowforge. So that is from that camera that I showed you earlier, and you can literally see inside your Glowforge. And then what I did was I added a shape around it. So I just added a circle and resized that circle to fit that shape. And actually it fits perfectly. So now let's take a look at these. So if I click inner settings for this one, for the circle, I can see that it's a cut. So you can engrave, score, or cut, or even ignore a cut. So I'm gonna cut this one, and then if I click on this one, it's an engrave. So you can see that engrave has been picked. Now I'm back on my dashboard, and let's say one of these designs, I want to add it 
to my canvas instead. So I'm going to pick this Hello Design. All you do is click it, it comes over to the Glowforge print software, and we can see that the same thing. So I can click on each of these and I can see that's a cut, and that's a cut as well. So this is just going to be a cut design, which is what I want to do. And I want to make this out of a walnut plywood. So I'm going to open my Glowforge and add the plywood inside. So I'm using the Proof Grade Light Walnut Plywood from Glowforge. And once I open the machine, add the plywood, and close the door again, my Glowforge will now scan the material. So you can see it says scanning up here in the right hand corner. Now I can actually see the material inside of Glowforge print. I could pick both of these and I could kind of resize this if I wanted to. Make sure I'm utilizing that full piece of material. And I can even move it around on the material. Make sure I want to kind of center this up. If I have multiple things I was cutting out of one sheet, they would all be on this screen. And I can see that both of these are a cut. Over here on the left it says cut under both. And it has that I have a light walnut plywood. So to scan that QR code and it knows that I have light walnut plywood inside of my Glowforge, it knows exactly the settings. All that's left to do is to click print and let the Glowforge do the work. I love that camera and the Aura Vision and getting a preview of my design right here in Glowforge print makes me confident that I have the sizing right as well as the location on the material. So now I'm ready to print. So I'm gonna hit print on my computer screen and I'm going to let the Glowforge start up. Now I have my air filter connected and I am gonna leave the microphone on for just this one cut. So you can kind of hear the air filter. So I do want to tell you that the microphone does amplify sound. So it will sound louder than it actually is. However, I do want to leave it on just for a portion of this cut, just so you understand the type of noise that the air filter will make. Now, these are connected by Bluetooth, so I don't have to do anything to the air filter. I'm just gonna click print on my computer and everything is going to just happen over here. Now, you do wanna stay close by while your Glowforge is cutting, so make sure you have enough time. So when I hit print, I'm gonna go ahead and hit print. It's going to upload the design to the Glowforge and then it is going to start cutting. At that point, it will display on my screen how long is left for the cut. When it displays that, you do want to make sure that you have enough time to just sit here, watch the Glowforge, make sure nothing happens. So it's uploading my design and then it scans. And then you can hear as the machine started. So the head moved to the center. That's the first thing that's going to happen. Then it's scanning the area, making sure it's ready. You hear a few more noises. It's almost ready to cut. It says preparing your print now on the screen. And it says auto focusing on your material. So the Glowforge itself will focus on whatever material you've put inside. Then once it's done doing that, it kind of moves around a little bit. And it's calculating precision movement is what it says on the screen. So now it's going to like calculate, make sure it has everything correct, checking for the alignment of the print, making sure that this cut is super accurate. During this entire thing, you don't want to open the door. You don't want to unplug the machine. You don't want to unplug the cord. You just want to let it do its job. And it will display on the screen what it's doing at each point in time. So at, for instance, right now it's calibrating. So it will calibrate at certain points during the cut. Once it's done calibrating, it kind of says preparing over here and something happens on the machine itself. The button over here on the left hand side in this corner starts flashing. Then it tells you it's magic time and it's time to print. So this entire thing is going to take 22 minutes. Of course, I'm not going to film the whole thing but we're gonna go ahead and press the button to start the print. So as you can hear, everything kind of started up and I'm gonna speak a little louder. The air filter is going and the glow forge is going to start cutting. So now you have an idea of kind of the sound and the noise that the air filter will make. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the sound on this and show you some of the cutting that's happening inside of the Glowforge itself. But just so you know, the air filter does make some noise when cutting.
when your Glowforge is done cutting, the software will tell you to allow it to cool down. Do not open the lid until it's cooled down. That way you have fewer fumes. Now you always want to leave this lid closed while you're cutting because this protects your eyes. So you can look at the laser while it's cutting, but you must have the lid closed. Now my computer says print done, so I can lift this and remove my print from the Glowforge. So I'm just going to kind of remove the scrap and stuff here. And there is my print. So we're gonna take a look at this, how to remove that masking, and then all the little pieces we can just pull out. And then we'll also take a look at cleaning the inside of the Glowforge because you want to keep it clean as well. Here's one of those pieces cut and these like little scraps just sort of fell out. So now we need to remove the masking from the front and the back. Now this one is cut from cherry. Um, I played with a few of these, cut them, and tried to determine the best way to remove the masking. So Gorilla Tape picks up the masking extremely well. And also another thing you want to note on this one, I put it over the label for the proof grade and it cut perfectly. So you can go right over the top of that label as well. And if you'll just stick down a piece of Gorilla Tape, this peels right off. And now it's just like a piece of masking tape and you can peel it back from your design. And I'll just go ahead and repeat this on the other side as well. And you can see these singed areas around where you cut. That is what the masking is for. So it protects your actual project where it does not have those singed areas. Now the sides of the project will be a dark brown in this case of the wood. I cut a few other projects with my Glowforge as well. Each of them I did in the same way. Got the designs the same way, picked my material, went ahead and printed my design. I'm doing a few things with engraving wood, leather, acrylic, just a few different varieties so you can see a little bit about what this machine does. This cuts and engraves hundreds of materials, so there's no way I could do all of the projects this machine can do in one video. But stay tuned to my YouTube channel because you're going to see more of this machine and what it can do. This is a leather piece. I both cut and engraved this leather. And I put the Gorilla Tape over the whole thing and you can see the masking came off almost like in one piece. So it definitely does work and this leather looks so good. And here are a couple engraved projects just to give you an idea. So this one's on wood, this one's on acrylic, and then I did add rub and buff to the engraving on this one to really make it pop. Both of these cut and engraved great. Um, with these intricate details, I was able to get the masking off there. This was when I was playing with the techniques of removing the masking so it didn't come off as clean. I did figure it out with the Gorilla Tape after a bit of trial and error. You will want to keep the inside of your machine clean. So remove any bits like when, after you've cut like small pieces. And if there are very small pieces, you'll want to vacuum those up. You can remove the crumb tray as well if anything has fallen through and clean up underneath there. And then the crumb tray itself, you can clean just with a cleaning wipe. So just wipe any debris off of there. After about 10 hours of printing, you will need to clean these rails, again, just with a cleaning wipe. If at any point anything gets on your camera, just use a lens wipe to clean the camera. So now you've seen the Glowforge Aura in action. Made a few projects. I'm very impressed with this machine. This is the perfect craft laser, introductory laser, laser for a small area, whatever the case may be, the Glowforge Aura is gonna fit the bill. Now, I would put this, like I did this on my craft table, just as a demonstration. So I would put this like on a cart maybe, so that you could move it around your space or have a dedicated area for it. And it does fit perfectly on an Ikea cart, and I will link to that cart in the description below this video, along with where to purchase the Glowforge Aura. So right now it's exclusive to Joanna Michael stores, and you can pick it up there. I think the price point of $1,200 is amazing for this machine. Now that does not include the air filter. The air filter would be a separate purchase, but to get started with a laser, that's an amazing price point. And I loved the precise cuts, and I didn't do it yet, but you can even engrave like photos. So you could take a photo, engrave it into wood, make an amazing gift. Can't wait to try that project. Yes, it might be coming soon. So be sure to subscribe to YouTube so you don't miss any of the content with the Glowforge Aura. I really think you're gonna like it. So do you need the Glowforge Aura? That's probably your main question. If you've ever wanted to try a laser cutter, this is probably a great way to try that at a lesser price point. 
If you are tired of cutting machines, tired of sticky mats, blades, not being able to cut these thick materials like three millimeter plywood, then the Glowforge Aura might be for you. And I do love the engraving much better than I've ever gotten with a blade cutting machine. So if you are into engraving, want to cut thicker projects, sick of sticky mats and that type of thing, the Glowforge Aura might be something you want to try. So now, if you have questions about the machine itself or anything I covered today, drop down in the comment section, ask away. I would also love it if you dropped comments there of what you would like to see me do with this machine. Do you want to see me cut? Do you want to see me engrave? What do you want to see me do with the machine itself? I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. And then also, if you give this video a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And again, be sure to subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any of the future content with the Glow Forward Aura because I have plenty of project ideas in mind. You might have heard a few in this video and I have even more ideas coming up. So thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.